HQ Post Game is presented by Turo. Find your drive. CBS NFL analysts Will Brinson and John Breach of Pick 6 Podcast fame in the mix to make sense of it all. Uh, guys, let's end where it all ended, and that's uh, with the Cowboys dismantling the Colts on Sunday night football. 33 points in the fourth quarter might tell us more about Indy than it does Dallas. Nonetheless, Will, this seems to be a Dallas offense squarely in the groove at the perfect time of the season. So, Breach, I guess I'm playing the role of Will Brinson here, so let's let's talk about this. <laughs> Joe Musso, I'm coming after you after the show, my man. I can't believe you did that. I was what given bad information, I like and I can't Ryan. see three feet in front of my face. <laughs> let's go to Ryan Wilson here first. <laughs> I love it. I feel like Matt Ryan in the pocket there, uh, throwing interception after interception. Uh, it was so incredibly tough to watch. 21-13 and a half, Joe, and, and Breach. And then the floodgates opened up. And we said at halftime, me and Tyler Sullivan, it felt like the Colts played their best 30 minutes they possibly could have. And the Cowboys played some ho-hum football, didn't seem interested at all points during the first half. In the second half, the, the switch flipped, and the Colts reverted to being the Colts. And the Cowboys are who we thought they were, and that is a team that can make a very deep playoff run. Uh, so it is what we expected. It is hard to see in real time Matt Ryan looking like a guy who should probably spend his Sunday afternoons on the couch. Not entirely his fault. There's not much around him. But I don't think we learned anything about either team other than that the Cowboys can whip up on really bad teams and the Colts need to hit the reset, reset button Yet again, and it starts with finding a quarterback who isn't over the age of 35, probably. So that's the, te the biggest takeaway for me. You don't want to go into that game if you're the Cowboys and squander away the leads like they did in the first half. They settled down after the break and, and blew the doors off a Colts team that, that was wholly unprepared to do anything about it. Well, Ryan, the Colts played more than 30 minutes of good football. They played 45 minutes of good football. This is a 21-19 game. Going into the fourth quarter, people are going to see the final score when they wake up on Monday morning and just think that Cowboys were dropping bombs in Indianapolis. But that's that, that wasn't the case until the fourth quarter. Uh, but like you said, the thing you learn here about Indianapolis is that, you know, maybe it is time for Matt Ryan to sit down and let someone else play. Uh, three interceptions, multiple interceptions in the fourth quarter. Uh, and that's been the story of his season. It's been the story of the Colts' seasons. They never left, lived up to expectations. They couldn't figure out the quarterback situation. Matt Ryan keeps turning the ball over. And when you think he's done turning the ball over, he turns the ball over some more. Uh, and it just keeps getting ug uglier, and these things just keep piling on. So that's what happened there. But if you're the Cowboys, look, you know what? The one thing you want to see – if you're a playoff contender, if you're a Super Bowl contender in the NFL, you got to win the games that you're supposed to get win. And the Cowboys were supposed to win this game. Uh, and the scoreboard says they definitely won this game. So I do think you have to feel pretty good about yourself, especially if you're the Cowboys defense, uh, forcing five turnovers, putting up 54 points, and, and really throttling the Colts by uh, outscoring them 33 to nothing in the fourth quarter. Is that mm -hmm. right? My goodness. 33 to nothing in the fourth quarter. It is the largest scoring differential in the fourth quarter in NFL history. Uh, there's some coaching that needs to be done in, in Indianapolis right now, and uh, not to suggest that that coaching is going to get them to any sort of playoff uh, situation, but Jeff Saturday is at a different crossroads now than he was a couple weeks ago and uh, living off of that bump that he got of being the new guy. How does he go into the locker room, John, after this game and in the week to come here and preach some sort of positivity, some sort of learning experience, some sort of future here for the weeks to come? Well, I think if you're Jeff Saturday, you do have some positives. It's, it's not often you can say this after a 54-19 loss, but you can sit there and say, hey, look, guys, going into the fourth quarter, this was absolutely a game we could have won. You look at what he's done since he's been there. They beat the Raiders. Uh, they lost by one to the Eagles, lost by a touchdown to the Steelers, and were within two points of the Cowboys going into the fourth quarter. So I do think there are some positive things uh, you can hang your hat on. I, I guess, Breach. Uh, you know, you and I talked about this on the Pick 6 podcast last week after the Steelers lost, after the, the Colts lost to the Steelers, about whether Jeff Saturday knows football clearly. He had that long run as Peyton Manning's center. He's one of the best centers in Colts history, I'm sure. But we wondered if the moment was too big for him as a coach because he didn't use those timeouts at the end of that Steelers game on Monday night. He looked almost like a deer in headlights. He admitted later that he should have called the timeout. We all knew he should have called the timeout. If he'd been sitting on his couch, he probably would have tweeted the same thing. And I wonder if that's the issue. Now, could he turn into a, a great coach with a ton of experience? 
Yeah, he's just not there right now. And look, to, to breach his larger point, Frank Reich got fired for a reason. This team was underachieving uh, to monumental levels, and, and it cost Frank Reich his job. And everyone can agree that he's an experienced coach. He's a very good coach. It just wasn't working out in Indianapolis. Now, Bridge is also right. The Colts have played tough in a lot of these games. This was, <laughs> wasn't one of them. I don't know if you can give a moral victory speech after this game in the locker room when you gave up a 33-burger in the final 11 minutes, not even the final 15 minutes of, of that fourth quarter. But, look, we all knew that this team wasn't going to be very good, whether it was Jeff Saturday or anyone else, Vince Lombardi, from the grave coaching this football team. They're, they're just not good on paper. They're, they're not good on the field. And a lot's going to have to change this offseason. I don't think Jeff Saturday is going to be the long-term answer. Perhaps Jim Orsay feels differently. But I, I think this is going like a lot of us thought it might go when you hire a guy with no experience and whose previous coaching experience was at the high school level. Yeah, Indy will look to pick up the pieces after this one. Dallas, meanwhile, feeling like they might have all the pieces in place, although Odell will visit Dallas on Monday. We'll see what comes of that. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.